Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Comic Shop Talk, episode 136, back on the Late Night Chat Network here. Uh, I'm your co-host, Nico, and I'm joined, as always, by my co-host, Chris. How you doing? Hey, not too bad. How are you? Good, good, good. You know, I had an interesting day today. I was, uh, I was you know, now that our liquor cl- stores are closed, uh, I was uh, I had to make my way over to the beer store here today, which is a little farther away, and that sun was beaming today, man. I think I got home, must have got like heat stroke or something. I was like, got home, I just passed out, like <laughs> I just crashed. <laughs> but I got the I got the beer, so we're good to go. <laughs> I secured the package, so yeah, no. Um, but uh, yeah, for anybody who doesn't know, our liquor stores here are on uh, strike at the moment here in Ontario, so. Uh, you know, it's made uh, getting booze uh, a little bit more interesting. You can still get it; it's just uh, not readily available as many lo- at as many locations. You're pretty good though, Chris. You usually just pick up beer, anyways. I guess, right? Yeah, yeah nothing changes for you. You got yeah, a beer store well, you. stashed away, stashed away there. But uh... same, same. Yeah, because <laughs> I think it's going to last for the summer. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> but uh, welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Comic Shop Talk. And uh, this is our weekly comic book review show here. And if you are watching this video on the Late Night Collectors Community YouTube channel, just a reminder that we've moved all of our content back over to the Late Night Chat Network YouTube channel. And uh, the next few episodes will be airing on both. But make sure if you follow us and watch these episodes on at, at the Late Night Collectors Community YouTube channel, you search up Late Night Chat Network, which was our original YouTube channel. That, and you subscribe over there because that's where the episodes will be going and airing in the future from a, a few weeks from now. So we're going we're gonna to sh- shut the doors on Late Night Collectors Community and we're moving back over Late Night Chat Network. And you can follow us and subscribe and all that good stuff over there. And you can find all of our content over there right now. We've already I've already moved everything over. Just a matter of make sure you're subscribed before we, uh, we close up shop here. So uh, make sure you're subscribed. To the channel at, uh, that's a uh, late night chat network and in, today we're going to be talking about the new comics that came out for the week of july 10th 2024 uh spoiler warning as always we're going to get into what happened in the books here talk about what happened show off some of the art so if you're afraid of getting spoiled you can always read your books and then come back and check us out and we, all of our playlists are up to date so everything's ready to go all right Let's leave that here all right chris all right, well, let's talk comics. Talk some comics. Cheers. Cheers. All right, first up on the docket here today, we've got X Men number one, long awaited book. I got the Ryan Stegman cover, of course, here. And because, uh, as I mentioned, Chris's comic book shop has been. In transition, moving to a new location, so he hasn't been able to pick up his physical copies this last couple of weeks. But I believe you got both the same covers as I did, Chris. And I also got the the Scott Campbell Psylocke cover here, of course. It's good. Oh, yeah. That's a nice one, yeah. So hold on, let me just move something here. All right, what'd you think of this one, Chris? I thought it was okay. A little bit of a getting to know you. I uh, like the art inside. Can't complain about that. And just uh, trying to figure out who's who on the team and where they are. Because it looks like they're stuck up in Alaska or something. And uh, the cop or a cop from the town shows up. And, yeah, I don't know. It wasn't that much like a, a groundbreaking first issue. But, you know, I guess these first issues come out, you know, hot and heavy nowadays. So can't expect too much from them. But I thought it was okay. I, I'm This is probably the one I'm going to stick with out of all the... The boots or the new new series coming though. I don't. I, Ryan Stegman has never looked better. This is a good looking book. Like he clearly took his time on this one. Knew that it was a big release. Uh, I think the last time that we saw him on something like we've seen a couple of short stories, I think in the pages of amazing Spider-Man that he did on some yeah. specials and stuff like that. But like <laughs> the last time we saw him was on that book vanish when he was doing this ma- many actual pages. And I know that he's not an artist that's probably going to be on this book for long, maybe just the first arc or, you know, we'll see, but uh, this is a good looking book, man. I, I, I I'm not going to lie. This is probably my favorite looking book of the week here. And there's some good art, but 
yeah, I just I've been a long time Stegman fan, and I just don't know if he's ever looked as good as he did in this in this issue. I thought he, he killed it. And um, you know, this there's this inker there that he's been working with that he's worked on with on Vanish, and I think a couple things before that as well. Is like now his like longtime inking partner, which I'm sure has helped. Like they've worked together enough uh, at this point that you know I'm sure they have like a shorthand. Uh, you know they 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 just they just look uh, the they, stuff just looks better and better. And I think I I really like this team. I like to set up basically what are they in? is it, uh, Antarctica or whatever they have like a base outside of there and uh, and now and ever since the end of Krakoa stuff it looks like. Uh, this is the team run by Magneto and yeah, like they, they took over an old Sentinel base or something. That's right. And the town, I guess was, uh, <laughs> they needed the work and they're upset. The mayor, whoever is here taking the tour of the new facility here with beast and beast is trying to kiss her ass and trying to like make good on, uh, mutant human relations. Cause of yeah. course that's always an issue. And, uh, yeah. And then there's this, it, it kind of, as as this is going on you see the rest of the team on a mission and it all kind of like um gets to a point at the end here during the tour where of course magneto makes it known that he's pre present there and him being a, you know a former bad guy and not looked like like looked upon by humans in that way he kind of makes like an interesting entrance on her and kind of like yeah it's beast job to make you feel comfortable but i'm just letting you know we're here and like you know what i mean like he was just like yeah. you know he kind of you know put the screws to her a little bit and, uh i really liked that and uh i'm excited for this book i i i think this is a great start like you said not too too much happened but uh yeah, you know, you, like, where they got wolverine uh, i just saw that panel like wolverine was captured by marcus like i don't even remember when that happened in the whole story or whatever in the fallout of the of the onslaught or whatever the orcas storyline so but anyway that's besides the point they had him uh, like on the cover of that x-men with like mark silvestri the one where he's yeah. like x or whatever right like uh like jesus christ or whatever <laughs> yeah so i thought that was kind of interesting they're like harvesting his organs or something in this uh in this panel i think this is happening now like this is taking place in the present like that was the Oh. Yeah, we must have been captured for a while because this is what's like X months later. You don't know how long this happened. Right. But anyways, that's just uh I, I'm liking the team. I think that the main players are good. I like seeing Juggernaut on the team. Magic, of course, a big favorite of mine. You got Quentin Choir, uh, you know, he's not bad. Cyclops, of course, and uh Wolverine, uh, Psylocke. Yeah, I, I like this team a lot. So yeah, like you said, I think this is out of all of them that I'm for sure sticking with this one. And I thought it was a solid first issue and it has a lot of promise. And I think like, as always with the X-Men, it's kind of always the same in the sense, like they always need to get a new base of operations. They always have to have this storyline about how they are going to deal with humans and this and that, yeah. and you know, but, but I think like that's to be expected at this point, but like, I, I still think uh, Jed McKay who wrote this did a great job. And I got to say, he, he gave if you if he gave nothing to Avengers like we called them out for like it felt like it was copy and pasting like fucking yeah like, this oh yeah this was like a real story if there was if, if if this showed up with like another team of five new ultra powerful characters that just kicked the X Men's ass and this was all about them coming back to beat them then that'd be like well okay we've seen this would be the third time we've seen this mm -hmm. so I'm happy that that didn't happen. Yeah, no, this is, this is, this was like, uh, any, everything that I think we I complained about, about him on Avengers is not evident here. Uh, so i I was really happy about that. Um, and you know, we'll see what happens. I mean, I think it's just good to see like a good start after the end of, uh, of an era of X-Men, which we, we overall really enjoyed. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of promise at this point. So don't, don't mess it up. <laughs> I think, I think, uh, It'll be interesting to see where they go from here. Yeah, this whole scene at the end, though, was cool. What he's just catching up with Beast Cyclops there. And then they reveal that um, the whole place was like they had all these sentinels. I guess there's a frozen sentinel there that looked like they were about to take out the town. So they put or they put it there to scare the town kind of to know that to let them remind them that uh like they're there to help them right and like and that it was a mistake the fact that these are the things that you helped build 
prior to this that that harmed us right and i i it was interesting to see the woman's perspective on that she's like oh now our economy is bad like we all these guys <laughs> lost these jobs they lost their jobs at least is like you know that these things are like they kill mutants right <laughs> like we can't have you guys making these in this facility anymore right yeah. so it was kind of i i did like that um that, that that part of the story that kind of made it interesting because like obviously people out of work is a very uh, you know a thing that happens and then the fact that it's directly affected by the mutants moving into their territory now I yeah you see why the townspeople aren't going to be very uh friendly towards them <laughs> right 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 so what'd you give this i'll give it a 3.75 I mean, I'm going to give it a bit more, uh, and I'm also, I'm also giving it this based on Stegman's art though. I think I got to give it a boost for Stegman's art. I'll go 4.25. I thought this was a really solid start this week. And, uh, while not too much happened, I feel like if you had a lesser than artist on this book, I probably wouldn't have given it that high, but this, it, I thought Stegman looked great. So I'll give it a 4.25 out of five this week. Uh, what else do we got here? Next up, we got Wolverine Blood Hunt number three. We got the Nick Bradshaw variant here. It's been cool to have him on all these variants for this uh, this series. What'd you think of this, Chris? Yeah, I didn't mind this one. This is a good Blood Hunt run. I didn't buy it, but I didn't mind reading it. And uh, you know, a nice bit of gore there. You got Wolverine and uh, I guess whoever his partner was. I forget what her name was. But they're just hacking and slashing, going through all these uh, zombies on the boat, and they make it to the base. And then Maverick's there. Uh, they run into some ninjas. They freaking take care of them. And then whether they were, I like the the strategy they have there, where they retreat to a smaller space to kind of funnel all the ninjas in there, so you can kind of take them on one by one. And then uh, I guess they think they're at the, their wits' end there, and doesn't. Uh, wolverine's friend kind of turn wolverine there after he takes the sword yeah he like but, suppresses his uh healing yeah, yeah that's what i was looking for suppresses healing power yeah and uh, and sharks in there too you know you can't you also kind of like when sharks are involved and yeah like it was it's a good story this is one of the better tie-ins i think for the this blood hunt and i, I think there's another issue isn't there or yeah one more, more issue there? one more issue yeah one more issue um yeah man this is great this is like everything i would want from a, a wolverine tie-in to an event honestly this this feels like a like a like an action movie this book like you yeah. said you go from them fighting the things in the boat and then sharks in the water and then fighting ninja it's like what more do you want what more could you want honestly this was and you got juan jose rip on the art here who's doing a great job yeah great art for this one too uh, yeah, this was a, a, a perfect tie in for me. And I'm glad that out of all the tie ins, this was the one I took a shot on. And it's it's honestly paid off. And I, I think it's it's been a great one. And uh, yeah, if you just want a fun action packed Wolverine side story that's happening dur during this event, pick this one up. I think uh, I think you'll enjoy it if you're, if you're a fan of Wolverine or like I said, just some good art or great action. This this one has it all. Honestly, I'm really satisfied with this miniseries. So um yeah good 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 tie-in for sure and i and i don't think it it really has to not doesn't have too much to do with the main story of blood hunt it's just its own kind of story being told here that's happening yeah. during yeah during it's kind of how people dealing with the world yeah as a little dark i don't know how they're gonna come back from this like but well, i guess we'll find out soon enough yeah hot vampire chicks if you want hot vampire chicks check this <laughs> out <laughs> yeah, looking for wolverine to be the king uh we'll see yeah yeah um what'd you give this that's uh, another 3.75 good issue i'll give it a four out of five good stuff all right next up chris absolute power task force number one yeah i just kind of gave this a read through just because i saw there's a i guess one of those amazing robots i guess he they sucked up superman so i think they call it what's the last the last son and they're trying to track down the captain and mary marvel or shazam and mary marvel and they use parasite as a bloodhound and supposedly uh shazam and mary marvel can't turn into shazam otherwise the the amazo or the robot's gonna suck their powers out so like you know i thought the story was kind of interesting you know they go to the rock of eternity to hide out there and you know that dinosaur there is putting uh just <laughs> finished cleaning up the place yeah <laughs> and uh i think they found some sort of 
artifact that they can use. I don't think they ended up using it though in this one here or, or not. I'm not sure, but well, you know, I think once you kind of at least go, uh, at least believe this, the, these amazing robots that can suck the powers out of everybody, then once you know, once you get by that, then it's an okay story. What'd you think? Do you read this or no? No, no, this isn't one I read. Oh, no, sorry. I thought you read this too. Yeah. No, it's okay. And, yeah, and that's that's about it. You know, like I'm I'm happy I didn't buy this. You know, I think these uh task support task force eight go up against, you know, I think each issue is different people going against different heroes. I will see how it plays out, but uh, it's okay to read, but uh, I didn't like it as much as the absolute power uh main main yeah. Series. Yeah, about that. I I actually I wanted to comment on that because I know I didn't rate that one as high as you did. I thought it was fine. You you really enjoyed it last week. It was in the running for your favor of the week. And then you know I've been hearing other positive things from people about it. So I went back and reread it again. Yeah, I do like it a little bit more. I don't know if I was in a mood when I read that. I remember I was complaining about it being too fucking too too like uh, dark and serious or whatever when I read it. But you know, but I think that just uh, le like it it just makes it more like a, a, a it seems like an event with stakes. Let's say, and maybe yeah. I was just not in the mood when I read it the first time around. I will say I did like it upon reading it again, but uh, not that I disliked it the first time. I, I rated it fine but i remember you enjoyed it much more and i was just like oh this is actually getting a really good response from people and i remember you were like you're wrong and last episode i was like yeah maybe i was <laughs> you know i went back and read that one so actually I, there is a couple that i ended up rereading again last week because sometimes in in order to do this show we got to rush through things sometimes uh, or yeah. like you know like say, sometimes it's the order of comics if you read too many serious things all at once then it's like oh fuck, more of this more of this more Some, of this you kind of get a good a good flow to them that it, uh, works out makes them all better that too and sometimes it's also the mood you're in when you read them right yeah. so we've we've talked about that on the show here before so yeah no i i just i just felt it was worth mentioning because that was something where i was just like well i i, I should read that again because like it because I, I had to decide whether or not i was going to pre-order the next issue too right so i'm just like am i liking this let me reread this again so i i saw so i i did i liked it more the second time around but uh, so do you think this is an essential reading tie-in or are you going to stick with this or what i'll probably stick with reading it but i'm not buying it right and i, I just give it a 3.5 you know it's it's sort of like out on the periphery but i'm, I'm sure i'll try and tie this in okay uh next up we got transformers 10 which i normally read too but i uh I didn't get my copy this week. It didn't get sent to the shop, so we had to reorder it. Or we didn't get our Daniel Warren Johnson covers, I guess, which are these covers here that's up on the screen. Then we got the variant, so I didn't order that one. I had ordered this one, so I had to wait. Anyways, what'd you think of this, Chris? I don't know. Transformers might be losing me. Ugh. Like that, it's it's starting to move back more into uh, like the, the Marvel type Transformer comics, where you know that's all worried about the, the Cybertron War. You know, I think in like in the beginning, I kind of liked it when it was just like the band of brothers of the, yeah, of you know whatever the Autobots versus the group that was in the Decepticons, and now just seems every week they're always adding new people or new robots, and I don't know who they are. Like I think now, like Ultra Magnus or I don't know who what his name was called from uh from one of the movies, or like a, an old Ultra Town, and he's all beat up. I don't know. They're just adding too many characters, and now I think at the end of this one, Shockwave, uh, he opened up some portal that's bringing Cybertron closer to Earth. So I don't know. I think it's just getting a little too far, too fast. Like, and where the hell is Megatron? I thought Megatron would be coming in like issue seven or eight. Here we're in issue ten. They're not even talking about him anymore. You know, I see more Megatron in uh, in GI Joe than you've seen in this. So. That's I'll give it a few more issues, you know, maybe another arc and uh, see where see where it goes. But it's going to be on the block. I can't believe I'm saying it. Yeah, I'm I'm not going to. I mean, I didn't read this issue, but I, 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 I agree with you in the sense like I feel like I've been enjoying the G.I. Joe side of stuff way more lately than this title, especially after the loss of not having Danny Warren Johnson drawing it. And I think I've said that on the show the last couple of issues, but it's still been keeping my attention. And like you said, I'll, I'll continue with it for now, but I do think I'm not enjoying 
Like I'm enjoying Void Rivals even more than this at this point. Void Rivals yeah. has been really good lately. So like it's I'm kind of enjoying everything else. I feel like in the Energon universe, whereas my interest on this book has been waning as well. Like I, I do agree with you there. Like I, I don't know if I'm at the point to say like the book isn't good, but I, I it isn't as good as it was when it first started. I will say that. Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe they just need to shift gears or or um need something big to happen in the title or something now because yeah yeah because yeah, we're, we're honing in on the end of the second arc right so like it's you know something's got to kind of kind of get started here right yeah so, then warren johnson leaves this then i'm out for sure like and writing it you it mean you, writing it as well you think yeah, yeah. well uh, i don't know if i i'm i'm out for sure if he leaves but i'm interested to see who would come and write the book if it, he's not involved i would have to it would depend on who was coming to take over for me yeah um anyways uh so what'd you give this that's yeah, 3.5 okay uh next up we got teenage mutant ninja turtles 40th anniversary celebration number one got the eastman and laird cover here of course got to, had to grab that one so this is like a big oversized one shot issue celebrating. Yeah. The 40th anniversary of the turtles. And they did an interesting thing with this issue. I got to say, I thought, I thought it was a, a good attempt. Um, I see what they're trying to do here. They, they basically were like, um, we're going to do short stories in this issue uh, based on every era of the turtles in the, co in the comics, as well as the shows and the movies, because there's been so many different variations and art styles and stuff like that between the animated series over the years. And like, uh, so they, they, so they did, they, that was kind of what they set out to do in this one. So they have, of course, you get started with the classic, you got the Eastman and Laird type style art, like them doing, uh, some pages, um, representative of the the origin of this comic where they started out and then going into the mirage era with some of the other creators that worked on the turtles during that time and then you, later on in the issue you get like you know the animated series uh, a comic of the animated series uh style um a comic of like the different animated movies as they change the arts the uh, animation style throughout the years all the way up to the idw comic which we have now i mean even this first issue it kind of mentions last ronin here so it kind of encompasses all eras of the turtles that being said i thought a lot of the short stories were poor like they weren't great um they are very quick like short stories and really didn't capture i felt like the stories just weren't interesting enough. I think like the, the, the other than like them capturing like, Oh, this is the art style of this era or whatever. The stories really didn't offer too much of like, you know what I mean? Like, cause again, these are short stories. Like, what are you really, it's hard to like make something important, feel important and feel like, you know what I mean? Like interest and interesting enough for just coming through with a short story like this. Right. So it's, it just, I don't know. I think this is something like if you're a huge Turtles fan, it's worth picking up. But I don't think any of the stories la had a lasting impression on me. Like, I'm not going to be talking about any of these stories in here. I thought that, again, you're going to get uh, different types of art in this book. Some artists were good. Others were not, in my opinion. So, again, like most anthologies, I know I'm a, I'm a harsh critic of them, yet I, I still pick the, some of them up because they're, they always seem interesting to me, right? This is a, definitely a mixed bag, like, as always, of the like anthologies, and I'm, I'm hard on them in that sense. But, but I did like the idea behind this one. I did like the intention. Just the execution, you know, was le less so, I thought, was, uh, was great. So I will give this a 3.25 out of five it wasn't the worst it wasn't the best either and you know i don't regret buying it because i am a turtles fan and this is cool to have but uh yeah i won't be like you know uh reading the stories again anytime soon they already announced that they're putting this issue into like a a deluxe size hardcover or whatever I, i'm not going to be picking that up right <laughs> so it's just it's what you know it, it is what it is uh, but yeah, some good artists in here too. I, I did like it. And I, you know, there's some eras of the turtles that I didn't really watch the cartoon here, like the Nickelodeon version and stuff like that, where that, which were present in this, uh, in this one. And, uh, you know, I recognize what eras that they're kind of referencing, but I just, I didn't read or, I didn't, or didn't watch the cartoon for a lot of that time period. So, um, but the IDW one at the end was really good. And, uh, I'm looking forward to the new series Some nice pinups here at the back of the issue. 
I thought that were really good. And uh, yeah, Stan Sakai, of course, with Yusaki Ujimbo. Love that. So yeah, some good stuff in there still. All right, uh, next up, I got um, Falling in Love on the Path to Hell, number two. This issue here. Um, again, just like, you know, I've said about some of the other issues here today. I actually don't have the slides for this one. This is uh, Gary Brown is the doing the art on this one. Jerry Duggan's writing it. I I think, again, this is probably the best that I've ever seen Gary Brown look. I really like the look of this book. I'll throw try to throw some art up here. Like his his stuff has always been more dark and gritty and, and inky and like kind of like plays with the blacks and stuff like that a lot more like uh, the spots, the spotting of uh, of putting the inks down. And uh, I just I just think he's gotten to a point where I haven't seen his art for a while. And this is probably one of the best looking things I think I've seen him do. So it's just nice to see certain artists that you kind of follow that aren't huge names, let's say, outside of creator own comics over the years kind of you know level up and do do great work so yeah uh, again this is just kind of continuing the story of like a, a samurai and a cowboy and basically purgatory that both died on their respective battlefields in the heat of battle there and and uh now they're being um uh, they're joined by somebody else that's basically um they're they're um uh they're got their tour guide essentially through this purgatory place that they're in letting them know how things work as they make their way through their world and they fight up, they fight, you know, come up, come up against obstacles and uh, you know, and try to deal with them. And this one, there's like some like, you know, zombie like creatures or something that they encounter that they have to fight along the, the way. And like I said, great art. Um, Yeah. I mean, this is something that I was reading Jerry Duggan talk about it. He has, he has long term plans for this book and he says, hopefully, you know, it does well enough that we could continue uh it's also something that might read better in trade but i feel like if they he says he wants to do enough work that's that to be collected in like an omnibus so like a big deluxe hardcover which i'm a big fan of that format so i might just continue reading this in issues and hope for one of those collections one of these days because i'll probably pick it up just based on gary brown's work on this series so really good stuff and then i guess somewhere along the line these two are going to fall in love with each other hence the name of the of the title right so so good stuff. I mean, again, a lot of themes that I I really enjoy are in this comic book. So I think I'm going to stick with it for now. But I could also see, depending on what happens, me dropping it just to read it in a collection. We'll see what happens. But for now, I'm enjoying it in issues. But I'll give this a 3.75 out of 5 this week. All right, Chris. And uh, the reason I bring that up is because, uh, you know, I looked at my pull list there coming into September it's at an all time high again with all these new series okay. coming out. Uh, so, you know, some books, unfortunately, if, if they lose my interest very quickly, they're going to be on the top and block. And with this next book, we're going to be talking about the ultimates number two, or go ahead, Chris, what do you think? about this? One? <laughs> you didn't like this one. I didn't say that. I just said, there's going to be books that are going to be on the chopping block for me. Uh, ultimate is not going to be on my chopping block. I think I'm going to see what's going on. I got my Nick Bradshaw variant cover here. Uh, hold on. Let me put my, it's a good one. I still uh, like what they're doing with this timer that, you know, this uh, this maker is coming out of uh, whatever prison they put him in in like 17 months. And uh, I just kind of see what's going on here. You know, the, we still have the the team there, I guess, the Ultimates or whatever, the Avengers that are there. I don't know what you want to call them. But they're still sort of painted black, let's say, because the whole world has been under uh, the influence of like false media. And here they're in the White House trying to take care of business. And you find out that, I guess, the city or whatever has been powered by some superhero that's been locked in the basement. And uh, whoever the president is, he's like telling him, about, oh, yeah, the president's in that uh, Iron Man suit. I thought that was okay stuff. <laughs> and, you know, and he thinks he's got all the cards. He goes, look, you can't take, you can't uh, save this person. If you do this, you know, the whole city's going to go into, disarray you know this is what's powering like half of the freaking whatever east coast or something so i thought that's an interesting play to the story you know and captain america trying to just be captain america you know and a few of the throwaway lines there where you know that little girl hey what does that a stand for because i guess there's no more america like you find out there's right. like the <laughs> united i i forget what they call it but like united region of something hey, you know I, i'm not too uh I'm pretty happy with this world that they're building here and 
No, I think they get some better heroes in there, you know. And I guess the big spoiler is there is that there's an American Chavez there or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And supposedly she's supposed to be the only American Chavez out there. Is that right? I guess for now, yeah, because America Chavez was her whole like thing she, was that she could jump to different worlds. So like, yeah, she has been doing it, maybe she's been trapped in this world this whole time. You know, that's true. And like, if that is the only version of her, like, because there isn't multiples of her, then yeah, that's very possible. That's what happened. I guess we'll find out next issue. I, the only thing I'll say about this, and no, it's yeah, maybe that is why I said it. It's not necessarily on the chopping block, but I didn't love this issue as much as I liked the first issue. And I'll tell you why. The only thing is I felt like we missed something when I picked this one up and read it. Like I felt like, was there an issue in between the last one and this one? But I think it's just the way that they kind of just jumped into things. Cause I forgot obviously of what their mission objective was at the end of that last issue about how that, how they're going to be going to all these different worlds and stuff like that. And they kind of set all that up in the first issue. And then this one, when I picked it up, I, I, without like thinking about that, when I just start reading it, I'm like, well, where are we? Like, what are they doing? Yeah. Like, it just kind of <laughs> threw me for a moment. So I don't think this is another one I might actually have to go back and reread. So my experience reading it, I don't think was as good. Um, just because I was a little lost at the start of it, but by the end of it, I was enjoying it. I just, uh, you know, like I said, I got I got to start to make cuts somewhere. So I hope that this uh, this story does pick up for me in that regard. But not a bad issue, just not my favorite either. I, I think I got to go back and reread reread both of them because I really remember liking the first issue because they set all that kind of that idea yeah. up about what they're what they were supposed to be doing, right? But you know, and, and well, I haven't got into like fighting any of the like any of the the kind of the real powers behind the scene, the powers that be, as as to say, you know, like right. You know, each region is still controlled by a group of supervillains, and they haven't even touched any of that stuff yet. And we really haven't spent a lot of time with the core group. And to your point, like they could be, I mean, I guess they're still adding to the roster because, like you said, like, you know, the, the, I think you could put some more interesting characters on this team. Yeah. And, you know, but last issue, we got Janet Van Dyne there, and, you know, like we, between all the action and the setup, I feel like we haven't really spent much time with these people as characters, yeah. right? Like they're kind of, you know what I mean? They're just moving the story along so far. So I, I, I so yeah, I, I think it's just such a different tone than what ultimate Spider-Man has been because it ultimate Spider-Man, like a whole issue would be them having a conversation at dinner, right? This is like yeah. big idea, which again, it's good because it's the Avengers book of the ultimates. It should be like, big big kind of like uh admission type stuff and ideas and stuff like that i think that but it's just we don't have the um we don't have the same like we don't have a history with these characters like we do because of the avengers right so i think that yeah, there's some stuff with steve rogers too where he kind of went to that hologram to kind of see all the stuff he missed and yeah you know, actually you know, there's a, a scene with the punisher there he's floating around in there somewhere yes well it's kind of just setting up some things in the future too that might be interesting yes yeah the punisher thing uh, that was interesting yeah so yeah it's like yeah so you know we'll, we'll see where it goes i'm not definitely not dropping it yet i think i think it has a lot of promise just this issue didn't uh didn't get me as excited as the first one what'd you give this i was looking at a 3.75 i don't think it was super great but uh it was good I'll go 3.25 for this one. Uh, next up, we got Batman Gotham by Gaslight, the Kryptonian Age number two. I got this uh, Riley Rosmo variant here of this one. Uh, the glare on that. Sorry about that. What would you think about this, Chris? I was okay. But uh, I, don't know, I don't know. We can get to the big reveal there if that's what we want to talk about. But before that, you know, the whole story of everything that's going on, I'm still not sure what this Kryptonian age part of the, the story is. I guess they're trying to hint at something because they kind of do have a little blurb there where I guess uh, Bruce Wayne sent out a team out to the Arctic somewhere to, to find this lost city of Kryptonians or something, which they do find. But what it means, who knows? And then it goes back to uh, Batman fighting uh is that Talia Al Ghul? And, you know, that's not too bad. You know, there's some stuff with Catwoman, but uh, I thought, I think the art style is good, but just the, like the, the basic characters I don't like, let's say. And, you know, even like when Wonder Woman shows up, at, or well, spoiler alert, Wonder Woman shows up at the end where, you know, they kind of almost put a little bit of a swerve on you because he's 
see one of those guys all cut up and then you know wonder woman sort of brooding in the shadows and you think she's the one that did it and then you find out she was one trying to protect them from whatever is going on and uh you know the stuff with these artifacts and everything so there's there's a good story brewing but i'm not digging the sort of whole timeline uh of when this is happening let's say i'm with you i i i, I agree with that i don't know if i'm a fan of um like Gotham by Gaslight, I really enjoyed. Uh, that was a nice story to kind of drop in on. But do I want to spend that much time in a 12-issue series, which this is, uh, with this storyline? Especially given the fact that, like you said, we're only getting a couple of pages of the setup in the background of the whole Kryptonian age aspect of this story. So I don't know. I think this is one of the books I may be dropping, at least in physical issues. I might just continue to read this one online. I just don't know if I'm I'm as in love with this time because I look at the other Elseworld books that are coming out too. Like I do like the Dark Knights of Steel stuff already. I know that I you know I like the, this whole idea of this Batman, uh, the like uh, like a barbarian esque Batman seems really good. But like this one, I'm not sure if I'm completely sold on this uh, on this time period for the character. Like it's I, I it is interesting. They are trying to get more things going here. It looks like they may be, be doing there. Like you see a picture of the, of the green lantern ring on the table there. Yeah. And when he comes across this wonder woman info that he has there. And, and I do like the idea, you know, he's got his own back cave and stuff like that. I also like how he got his ass whooped in this by Tally. Like, it's not like he's like, uh, you know, um, he, he's winning every fight in this yeah. book so far. So that's kind of interesting. Yeah, I don't know. It, like you said, there's a good story brewing, but it's it's certainly taken its time, and this might be something better to revisit in a collection. I don't know if I, 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 I'm in it for reading it uh, monthly in issues. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, Wonder Woman showing up. She fights like this big like millipede or something from the Earth. <laughs> like I don't know. It's like a big bug. Yeah, it kind of came out of the left field there. <laughs> yeah. But she looks cool, so I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sold on this book, to be honest. Like I thought, the first issue was good. This one less so. I'm not. I'm not in 100 percent as of yet. I'll give it another issue, I think, and then I'm yeah. either going to drop it or continue reading it online. I think at this point. So, what'd you give this? I'll give this a 3.5. Yeah, that's the, uh, that's my rating for this too. Yeah, 3.5. Uh, next up, we got Get Fury number three this week. All right. What did you think of this? Hey, this is an okay story. I just don't like that little Chinese guy or whatever. <laughs> he is really bugging me. <laughs> Why? Because he's narrating the story or like? Yeah. What? The, the, does he show up in the story here in the middle? Like, I know I might have. Yes. I was a little sick when I was reading this, but. He, he does. He, he shows up. Um. He shows up as one of the characters from the past in this in this story. Yeah, um, most of the story was those two those two agents there started talking about what could happen or what would happen. Yes, and kind of how Frank Castle and uh, Nick Fury are kind of screwing the system or trying to you know yeah kind of break their plans because I guess they got uh, they have some heroin deal going or something and uh, yeah. Yeah, so that's all good stuff. Like the the violence here is great, though. You can't complain about that. Every issue, you get some crazy over the top violence. <laughs> like this one, like the, the most brutal part is this: is he pushes the guy under the car and it just runs over. <laughs> <him>. <laughs> I was like, holy cow! Uh, yeah, just like even like even when you think the story, like while while good, it, it gets to a part where it's just like. You know, it's a little boring, and then he breaks into like a crazy violent like killing spree, and you're just like, Whoa, <laughs> yeah, I, you got those panels there. Was he carrying this guy around, like shooting his gun? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then he throws him in the in the street, and then he gets run over here. I think this next one here, yeah, he gets rolled over by a bus, like his guts just come out, <laughs> yeah, and then by the end of the issue, he ends up meeting up with the uh wife and kid apparently of uh, of uh furies uh, of uh, nick fury apparently i guess he's uh maybe in vietnam he uh had some uh <laughs> sex he had some sex with maybe one of the uh the people there i don't know because uh there's a woman yeah. claiming to be his wife and child there at the end of this issue yeah. so that, that that's was... okay stuff. it's good reading it's good fun and uh you know i don't know if it's a punisher issue but you know it's frank castle it should be like a well, I guess they're not Punisher's not featured in this, but uh yeah, it is a good it's a good yeah, Frank it's a Castle story. But but once again, it sort of wrecks this uh Frank Castle 
story or his his history or whatever, you know, that he was an okay guy until until his family got killed. This just sort of reinforces this stuff that uh he was a bad he was a bad motherfucker. Yeah. Well, I mean, Garth Ennis, like I said, he has written lots of comics with him in the war. Um, so this kind of falls in line with like just the other comics that he's done with him during that period of time, yeah. but but you're we're right. Those, uh, like the whatever the the generals are talking about Frank Castle, how he, you know, he would he re up like within a week, and you know, like, oh, this like you know, I know people, you know, we kill people here a lot, but the Frank Castle, he seems to enjoy it or something. That's like right. That. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't like that kind of history put on him. <laughs> What'd you give this? I get a three point seven five vote. Good stuff. Same, same. Yeah, three point seven five out of five. All right, Chris. Action Comics ten sixty seven. Yeah, it's a, it's a new arc, I guess, with the All Star Superman. A great looking comic, but once again, for whatever reason, this sort of takes place in the past. It brings back, I guess, I don't know the Superman in the sixties or something like that, and there's some space person comes down and. You know, they talk to Superman about having some sort of intergalactic battle for the, the fate of the Earth. So the story is kind of, you know, the story I'd give a, a three, but I thought the art was great. And it's it's a good looking comic. But, uh, you know, I'd, I'd prefer the story to be sort of in continuity and see what's going on. And, you know, that kind of threw me off for this. And this is I think the last action comics was looking so good. Right, and this is continuing in the line of like different people coming on the book to write it, right? Because this yeah, is so give me another three, whatever three, four issue arc, maybe. So this is uh Gail Simone that wrote this one, this issue, and uh Eddie Burroughs on art, which again, like I feel like I've just been repeating myself here today. I've always liked Eddie Burroughs's stuff, but again, this is this I haven't seen him for some time. I feel like this is some of the the better stuff I've seen him do in more recent years. So yeah, it's I didn't read this, but it looks like a really, really good book, man. Like, yeah, that's why the first thing I told Chris too. I was like, wow, yeah. the art, art looks killer on this issue. Well, uh, it seems like when they don't have to write stories in continuity, in continuity, let's say, they can take their time. Like, you know, he, he might have had months and months to do this, you know what I mean? Because it's not like, okay, we got to get this out, you know, well, by a certain time, you know what I mean? Exactly. Also, the fact, like I said, I had really haven't seen him drawing books lately. So yeah. th that is probably the case. This is probably like a job that he took on that may have been done for a while or that he had he had a year to draw. Maybe, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So it's or like several months. Who knows? Because I don't think he's a he's not a monthly artist anymore from what I at least I know. I haven't seen him on uh, a DC book for some time. Or maybe I'm just not paying attention because, uh, yeah, I just. I feel like the last time I saw him is I've always enjoyed his art. It's been fine, but this is, this was really good looking on, on his yeah. part. So yeah, I, he may have just taken his time on this one. So yeah. Yeah. I think there's a backup story. I don't really remember what happened in there, but I don't know this. I'm probably, I don't know if I've ordered the, the next few in the, of this up, but I may pass on whatever's left and see what, who's coming up next. Yeah. This is a page from the backup story, I guess here. Anyways, I don't think it was a big story to begin with. But. Rainbow Rainbow Rowell wrote that one, who was um, the She-Hulk writer. So yeah. this is the first time I think that I've seen her name on anything from DC. So maybe that's a sign uh, with She-Hulk being canceled of things to come, right? That's interesting. Um, yeah. Uh, what'd you give this then? Yeah, I was have to give it a 3.5, unfortunately, but uh, I was hoping for more. Uh, next up, we got Avengers 16, which... I wanted to read this because I think this uh, ends the story that I really enjoyed on the last one with these blood hunt tie-ins. I just didn't get around to it. What'd you think of this? Yeah, it's not enough. You remember where, what's going on in the Avengers yeah. here? Captain America, they're up on the helicarrier and uh, they're fighting the whatever, the, the vampires. And somehow they get that helicarrier up over out of the, the cloud range and they're up in the sky. So, you know, they kind of got the, they got the sun on their side. So you know, a few of the vampires get zapped or burned in the sun. And the team they have there, I'm, I'm loving freaking Hercules here. Like, I don't know, yeah. I haven't seen this guy in ages. And they got him drawn right. They got him huge. They got him talking. Like, you know, he doesn't just sound like Thor. It's like, yeah. I don't know, however, they, whatever language they use for him, it, it suits him perfectly. 
And, you know, I got Captain America. He's fighting this. I don't know what his name is. Blood Major. I don't think it's Major Blood, but I forget what his name was. No. That's he he got the ultimate plan there. You know, they were going to scuttle the, his plan was to send all the vampires to scuttle the, the helicarrier to blow it up. And then everybody would die because none of them can fly in there. And, uh, you know, remember the, the first issue where, was it uh, Hawkeye or Kate Bishop? You know, she had her project of the... Yeah. Of the helicarrier, yeah. So they needed to know how this, you know, how he, how he would scuttle the the helicarrier. Of course, she knows how it's all going to be done, and uh, so they have to go to this one room that's being held by the the Nazi vampires. Mm -hmm. And you know, they think, okay, you know, we're ready to die for our cause. And of course, Captain America, he he ends up getting uh, that major blood character to kind of explain his plan which is i don't care about anybody as long as as long as you die if i have to sacrifice everybody on this whatever the helicarrier to do it and they play that tape for those guys in there they're like what what the heck and they open the door and you know they you know try and run out of there and then of course everybody saves the day so oh man i gotta read this i i like i i i didn't have a chance to but i'm gonna read it's it a good read you know like it's a good end to the story and it's you know it's it's just forgetting the Avengers, having like Captain America has to be in the Avengers. I don't know how they thought they'd get away with Captain Marvel yeah. and what they wanted to do in the beginning. Avengers with Captain America, you know, get Captain America out of his own book and put him in the Avengers. But this is clearly he could do this type of book with this blood hunt type uh, yeah. tie ins. Like, this is what I feel like I've been wanting out of Jed McKay and the Avengers, not what we got. And and if he moves on and brings the other team back with the next issue after this tie in now, like I, I'm curious to see because I might look into it and continue reading it. Well, if it storm's was... coming back, storm's coming in. That's the big, oh, yeah, uh, that's true. Next... Maybe, maybe after the first year, maybe he's finally cooking something up interesting over on the Avengers. Then I don't know because I, I want to like it. I liked, yeah. I liked the first issue of this Blood Hunt tie in stuff, and I was just like. This is what I wanted from him on this book. I'm like, this is like interesting characters on the Avengers. Like you said, Cap yeah, and Pietro, like, I kind of glossed over that, but Quicksilver's in there and he's, he's got some key roles in there and he's a jerk the whole time too. So it's, it's all good stuff. Yeah. What'd you give this? I talked it up. I guess, I guess I got to give it a four. I like the first issue a lot. I, I wish I had read this. Like I said, I, I just didn't have a chance yeah. to i i i yeah i liked i i have no doubt that this is worth worth a four for sure because i i i quite like that first issue it almost made my favorite of the week that week unexpectedly when it came in i was like oh it's a blood hunt tie-in sure i'll try it out even though i hate it on jed mckay's avengers and i was just like what what is this i'm like what, is, what, 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 what like how, you could do this with this book i'm like come on now like what, i don't know what do you do with all this this other stuff he was doing the, the beginning yeah which is almost like a blood hunt practice almost with that or whatever pretty much because if a lot of the themes of like the bad guys that they were facing off against yeah. felt like the bad guys in blood hunt right so anyways um here what uh what we got up here next and finally we got uh, amazing spider-man number 53 this well, well, before i want to do spider-man i'm gonna throw an audible here there's a few comics i did read that i forgot to mention oh go ahead i did read uh kill all immortals okay i think it was a new one from image Great art for that. You know, the story's decent. I think it's a bunch of uh, Vikings or something that are immortal. And they sort of have some family infighting going on. That was some decent stuff. And then uh, they, I also did read the Union Jack, the Blood Hunt tie-in. And to read, I, I think I went from that Kill All Immortals to Union Jack. That Union Jack art was just garbage in there after that, you know? <laughs> like, not that it was bad, but... You know, this Union Jack is, it's not a, a story that's out there. You know, whoever was the art, I imagine they had time to do it, but it just seemed half-assed. The story was okay, you know, it's, but they were all talking in like, in I guess, British English. I don't know what you want to call them. That right. got a little bit, a little bit of irritating after all, in it, in it, in it, and fucking about a water and all that stuff. But the story was decent, you know, whatever the vampire people, you know, when one person had to sacrifice himself. And I don't know who this Union Jack character is. I haven't even heard of him, but seems to be a big deal. I did read the Hulk Blood Hunt tie-in. And, you know, it's just following. I don't know why they've made a separate issue. They should have just thrown this into the Hulk because it's followed a lot of the same veins 
of uh of the hulk it was more just a horror story you know like there's some some crazy town that you know hulk or bruce banner just walks into and then it's you know surrounded by all these zombies or whatever that are hiding underneath and and supposedly hulk has a problem or bruce banner has a problem turning into the hulk because these guys rip away at his guts before he decides to turn into the hulk and it seems as i don't know if they're just trying to all these artists are trying to one-up each other on on the grossest ways they can make bruce banner turn into the hulk because these liners like his rib cage is open then you know there's just, just like green inside there that kind of comes out to, to become the hulk right it was okay and i did read a I don't know how to even say it, gotcha man or something. Yeah. It's, it, it just reminded me, or not reminded me, but it was from the, the old G-Force cartoons from uh, back in the day, if anybody remembers those. And I think it was based more on the, the villain. I forget what his name is. But uh, he gets poisoned, and then he has to figure out who poisoned him, and he goes way down the line to figure out. It's like some farmer in, in some town. So it's, I think the series is a bit more of a history based on him. And it wasn't too bad, but I didn't know those G Force people were science ninjas. That's like their the term. Who who like, you know those guys that have those bird suits? Yeah, who publishes that book right now? Do you know or? I'd have to look into it, but uh, but I'm interested in reading some G well Gotcha Man comics or whatever. Yeah, and I think they got a whole series going on. Like there's there's uh this is a four issue series kind of following the villain. And then they're, you know, putting out some of the. Oh, Colin Bunn is writing this. Oh, that's he. Oh, that's yeah. That's that's interesting. Oh, he's. I like a bunch of stuff Colin Bunn has done. Yeah, Science Ninja Team. Yeah, what what do we got here? This is. Uh, yeah, they got some good people on the. Oh, Mad Cave, Mad Cave Studios. Yeah. They're, they're a newer, uh, newer publisher. Okay, interesting. So you enjoyed it? Yeah, it's not too bad. You know, it kind of brings me back to the. That G Force there. I want to see that. I want to see that G Force team out there do what they do. I forgot what they did. You know, I haven't seen this cartoon in like freaking 40 years. Yeah. I, yeah, I can't say I was, I'm as familiar with it, but I'm aware of it. Like, I know what it is, but like, I, I don't feel like I've ever seen it before. Um, yeah. Uh, how dare you, though? I looked up the artist for this uh, Union Jack. It's my boy, Kev Walker, who did the art on that book. How yeah, dare dude, you? you know, look at it brutal. I, I mean, I didn't see his work on that that issue. I, I mean, or they that probably story. did. Let me tell you that they probably okay. told me hey, that's not on time. You need it done in a month. It's yeah, very, no problem. I can write dragon vampires. I'll put a little. I'll just very, make their teeth longer. It's very possible. I just I like Kev Walker normally, but I, I'm not gonna. I, I haven't seen it, so I can't speak to like uh, uh, his work on that. I'll just make the teeth longer, in it. <laughs> I'll make the teeth longer, bro. Yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, I believe he's also English. So. <laughs> Shout out to Kev Walker. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, Kev Walker, I believe, comes from uh 2000 AD. Like, he was one of the uh guys. Things. Maybe he doesn't like Marvel. <laughs> Check this out, bro. <laughs> I'm gonna afford it in. I'm gonna afford it. <laughs> I'll show that. <laughs> Marvel uh, calling. Yeah. <laughs> oh, anyways. <laughs> That's good. But they know I'm working on uh 2000 AD comics for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you're gonna pay me in it. <laughs> I'll make them some stick fingers, bro. <laughs> Okay, I gotta look this up now. I want some way. <laughs> Not this right this moment, but I'm gonna be checking that out. All right, there you go. There's uh Chris's off the cuff reviews, guys, for some of the yeah. things he's been reading. <laughs> I think you should just approach your regular reviews like that. <laughs> All right, uh finally we got amazing Spider-Man 53. And uh another great Ed McGinnis cover here. I hear he might be the new guy, at the least artist. for that work. The artist on the new relaunch, well, yeah, Kelly but, and uh, Ed McGinnis, but I hope they, so. Honestly, they've worked together before. That would not be a surprise if that's the case, but I guess we'll see. And I would not be mad at uh, Ed McGinnis drawing it. But uh, what do you think of this, Chris? I thought it was okay. I think the art makes it a hell of a lot better than it should be, and it was a fun comic. You know, like I think they're, you know, you got the serious tones there, but then you got uh, what Mary Mar or what Marvel Girl showed up with her. A ragtag team of the worst people ever. 
you know, being a next person, you know, with uh, Peter Parker in trouble like this, you know, I think she could call some better people. But I guess uh, she got whoever was there at the time. And I still like that there was a plan that Peter Parker had going on in the background the whole time. You know, maybe it didn't work out for them, but at least he always had a plan. I love the like. This is the first time I've really liked Green Goblin. I think the way I have the way they have him drawn is is just freaking great, awesome. And you know, I don't know if there's some swerves in the story, but supposedly, like you know, you think Peter Parker is healed from uh, this Goblin curse or whatever's going on, but maybe that's not the case. And Rec Rap, I think they got Rec Rap right again. Yes. There was a time when he was wrong, and yes. I think now he is right again. So much so, I was, I, was really, I was really sad about this moment when he got taken out by the uh, the Goblin Glider there. I was like, oh no, Rec Rap. Yeah, but isn't he a demon? Like, he can just, he can take that shit, doesn't he? I, yeah, but like the, the reaction was like, oh yeah, he might be dead because Miss Marvel started freaking out. But like, I, you know, I, 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 you're right. He's fine. I'm sure. But like, again, just to see him with the goblin glider, like in his chest, I was like, no, <laughs> <laughs> they wasn't there to see where he's upside down with somebody. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, what do we do now? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, it was okay. I, I, like you said, I think the art helps for sure. I just thought this was kind of like, uh, um, I I really like the start of this arc, and I I feel like you know we're kind of. I think now they're stretching it out. Yeah, yeah, it's. You know, supposed to, I guess those sins are going back, and he's going to become the goblin again somehow. Yeah, was, hey, I did like the stuff with Craven though, where he's like, oh, yeah. you know, he's kind of stayed true to his character. He's you know, I've I've pledged myself to these guys, but oof, you know, the honor the honorable thing would be due to stay, but you know, is a there's bigger game afoot and he has to leave. So we'll see. He might have a role to play in all this too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're coming to the, to the end of his run here. Right. So I'm interested to see where they, where, where they, where they end up here towards the end of it. But um, I just think this one will, you know, it wasn't as good as I think previous issues, but it's still fine. What'd you yeah. give this? I was giving it a 3.75 and that's because the art. Yeah, I can get there with the art. I was going to give it a 3.5, but I do really like Ed McGinnis on this book, so I'll, I'll give it a 3.75 as well. All right, that's going to do it for what we read and want to talk about this week, though. Uh, let's take a look at what we we're planning on checking out next week. Let's bring up my list as well here. Let's see here. You got yours ready there, Chris? Or are you still pulling yours up here? I got it up there, and hopefully, I should have some issues next week. I think I'm gonna freaking pay through the teeth for three weeks. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Let's see what we got there. But I'll probably is this Blood Hunters four already? I've not read any of those yet. But uh, I'll be. I think I'm getting Phoenix number one. Okay. See, I probably read the Amazing Spider-Man Blood Hunt three. I think that's been garbage. Uh, Invincible's Iron Man number twenty. I think that's the last issue. And oh, I did read Spider Boy too. I forgot about that. That was I think he's dead or something. He's dead. <laughs> what? I don't know. I think at the beginning, <laughs> or he's lost in the web or something. It's it's kind of. With all the characters that are in there, like these are all big time players, but it's more of a kid's book. So, yeah, like they're all kind of silly. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, maybe I'll, I'll read this Laura Kinney uh, Wolverine Blood Hunt. But well, there's really not much coming up from Marvel. I think the big issue I'm looking forward to is the, the Iron Man one. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Let's see what we got for DC. I think I'm getting world's finest. Is that arc over with the mites? Oh no, not yet. I think it's the last issue, possibly. Maybe I'll read that, see what's going on. The grand finale, yeah, yeah, it's the yeah, finale. Catwoman, Nightwing. I think I got Superman 16, Wonder Woman 11. I'm looking forward to that because I think you find out how she loses her powers in this one. Okay, I saw some preview for that. They have a different artist on it, but it looks good. And I think I'll probably probably read the Dark Knights of Steel all winter one. See what's going on there. Yeah. Oh, Tony Daniels doing that. Yeah, that'll look good. He's. A oh, I read. Did you read Geiger yet or no? 
No, I didn't read it this week. Did you read it? Yeah, I did read that too. Did That's you like so, it? Scott Geiger is freaking awesome. I, I've been telling you for three issues about That's that. Good looking <laughs> comic too. I gotta go go back and read the first. You clearly don't care about three. my. You clearly just don't care about my opinion on this show. I literally been telling you for three. Well, that's why I read it. I thought you'd have Geiger. I forgot I had it, but you didn't I bring know. it up. Oh, I haven't read it. I, I I dropped the ball on reading some things this week. So that that's. I, I've been really enjoying this series. That's what I said to you. I yeah, really night is good. That, that, that night is pretty good too. Well, there you go, everyone. Now you got Chris's opinion that is good too. So now you know it's good. Yeah. Look, yeah. no, Geiger's good. <laughs> yeah. Good looking comic too, and it's uh. It's, Gary Remind Frank. me a bit of uh, like Judge Dredd in the whatever those wildlands or whatever. Yeah, yeah. you know when you're outside Mega City, I forget what they call it out there. But for uh, for Image next, we got Destro, probably be Fishfly Seven. Yeah. Oh, we're well, talking about Jeff Lemire. Uh, I think he's an ops. He's going to be part of this absolute universe for uh, for DC. Yep. Yeah, there's a lot of talk about what's going on with that. They haven't made a official announcements as of yet, but I think that's going to be he's been Flash. Yeah, he's been posting stuff for Flash. That's the rumor going around. Like he was posting stuff for Flash months ago. That's yeah. the rumor that he's and and if he is, I'm in. I, I mean, I love yeah. Jeff Lemire. So like, and I I haven't read a Flash book in some time. I don't time. like Flash, but uh, I'll get it for Jeff Lemire at least number Same. one. Same. I'm getting Witchblade number one. Let's see what that's about. Hopefully, nice. get some '90s uh, goodness out of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some nice TNA. <laughs> uh, yeah. For next week, I got Batman, Superman, World's Finest, Twenty Nine, Dark Knights of Steel, All Winter, Number One, Nightwing, One Sixteen, Wonder Woman, Eleven, Destro, Number Two, Fish Flies, Number Seven. Uh, we also got Namor, Number One, coming out next week by yeah. Jason Aaron. I'm looking forward to that. And uh, Iron Man, like Chris had mentioned, the last issue of that. And uh, let me just see if there's anything else here that I was reading digitally here. Um, let's see here. But yeah, there's there's a lot of yeah. I'm interested to see what what the uh, I've been I've been hearing about a lot of good artists that are going to be part of this uh, this absolute power or whatever it's called. Uh, absolute uh, DC. Yeah, Scott absolute. Well, he's running, I think, Batman or something. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Yeah, no, that, that for DC, there's nothing else here. It looks like, uh, image. I'm not sure. Let's see. I think it's just Destro and Fish Flies. Oh, Napalm Lullaby. I might just read online, possibly. I, I dropped it, I think, in the issues now. Um, yeah, I think that's it for image, though. And then we got for Marvel, like you said, there's uh, Iron Man. Uh, nothing really else jumping out at me right now. Namor, I'm reading. I might try Phoenix number one if you're 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 picking it up. I might read that. Yeah, I think I I have to take a look. Maybe I didn't pick it up. I saw the preview for that too. That's not looking so good. Oh no, <laughs> she's out in space and. Uh. Uh, yeah, no, I think that's it. I think that's it for next week for me. So there you go. So yeah, some good things looking forward to there. Um, all right, Chris, favorite book of the week. I don't know it's a tough week this week. I think, uh, I might just go with Avengers. I, mean, I talked that one up the most. You did. Although it sounded like you like Geiger hard. too, even though we didn't really talk it's about true. it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if we did talk about Geiger, I might have given it to Geiger. You can. That was a good one. You can talk about it if you want. We just didn't really have a whole segment about it. But if you read it and forgot, like if you like that the most, go for it. Yeah, I might have to give it to Geiger. I almost want to go to like to uh to Gotham Comics and see if they have the back issues there. Nice. That's that's high praise. There you go. Yeah, I uh I and you have the first trade over there already too, right? I gave you the first trade, I think, of that of Geiger. Ooh, as yeah, well. I should go to that. Yeah, yeah. I will say though, this this new series is even better than the last installment because like the last installment though kind of sets it up like his origins and this kind of yeah. thing. But oh, it, well with Geiger, I don't know. I guess we didn't talk about what happened. The beginning what? that like does he travel with that dog with yeah. two heads? Yes. Yeah, in the beginning, somebody freaking 
takes the dog. Yeah, no, that happened at the end of the last issue. That happened at the okay, end of yeah. the last Yeah, well, how it starts here, like, the guy yeah. captures the dog and, like, pulls out his teeth or something. And I'm like, whoa, this is like a freaking... Oh, no. Yeah, I see John Wick. I see what happens there. Yeah, well, at the end of the last issue, basically what happened was uh he they were going to look i told you that he they were went they went to look for a book in a library because yeah. he, he destroyed his book on the road and he re, the the book reminded him of better times with his family and then when they were going to do this they got sidetracked and then they in the middle of the night some guy came and abducted his dog which is like yeah. you know i'm gonna be like not uh good. yeah not good exactly so but it's been great so far so yeah that's, well, that's why I, you know he was trying to walk that path of peace there but once his dog was gone you know even the night saying hey you stole this we shouldn't go this way because it'd be too much trouble yeah and he's like well i'm looking for trouble now yeah yeah so there you go i i think you should give it to that because i i think like i said i yeah. I, just, I just missed reading it this week it could have even been my favorite this week because i've really been enjoying that series so yeah there you go geiger everybody yeah, really go, check, geiger. go check it out i actually think it's the best book he's done out of that launch of all those books in his label it's the best one yeah. the, that other one the other ones aren't uh aren't hitting the same as this book. i think geiger's a good whatever a good hero a good story like you know that red coat that's kind of crazy yeah this rook you know that's a that's a big world you know like i think geiger had some like meat too you know he already had some history he had some success with that already i'm really disappointed in rook exodus because like i think it has a lot of potential and the art looks fantastic by jason fabok i just don't think it's been that interesting of a story so far and like you yeah. said i think i think your your mileage may vary on uh, uh red coat uh that one's been okay but like it's not my this is definitely the clear and far away winner out of, out of yeah, all the, the flagship right? of this ghost machine. Absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, it's been good stuff. Uh, and yeah. Okay. So my favorite of the week, I'm going to give it to, uh, I'm going to give it to X-Men number one. I, 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 I think it's the best yeah. looking book that came out this week. And while like, like you said, there wasn't too, too much that happened because they're basically, uh, you know, setting a lot of things up um, for the new direction of this book and of this team. I think it was a good start and uh, I'm looking forward to more. And I'm really happy that Jed McKay didn't drop the ball in terms of the team aspect yeah. on this title that he exhibited at the start of uh, Avengers. So yeah, I, I, well, I'm I, happy he phoned in Avengers and blood and to, to spend his time on X-Men. <laughs> yeah, it was a, it was a real good start. So yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, let's be honest. I think that's the, that's the, I mean, the, the fact that he's writing Avengers and X-Men at the same time is pretty yeah. crazy. Yeah. Like that's, that's, I mean, like this is a guy from Nova Scotia. Like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I don't know what Marvel's doing, but, <laughs> but uh, Hey, listen, I'm enjoying Jed McKay's work. So I'm, I'm here for it. Right. So I just, yeah. you know, I just, it just seems to have come out of nowhere. I don't know if it's just cause they've run out of, talent over there <laughs> there's like all of a sudden you're like hey you want to you want to write a, a, a adventures sure you want to write x-men okay <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's so, one thing. i think when Mar marvel was better when it was its own company not uh not a sub sub subsidiary of something yeah a subsidiary of disney yeah, yeah 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 no for sure for sure so anyways uh yeah. all right all right guys that's gonna do it for this week uh thank you for tuning in as always make sure once again if you are watching these videos on Late Night Collectors Community, thank you. But make sure you subscribe over at Late Night Chat Network on YouTube, which will be our new home uh, as officially in a few weeks. But all of our videos are going to be uploaded for the next few weeks on both channels and uh, and all of our contents over there already. So you can go back, check out the playlist, all that good stuff. And uh, thank you again. And thank you to Chris. And we'll uh, we'll see you guys next week, everyone. Later. All right. Take it easy.